box. You opened it. We came. Hellraiser, a name burned into horror history like the chains of Pinhead and his Cenobites into the flesh of his human victims. With the first film's introduction to our screens in 1987, the film and the universe itself seemed to be a sure thing, with the subsequent films releasing and dwindling quality, rights battles and bafflement of ownership through to direct-to-video rights holders and the Hellraiser property has sat for some time, languishing in purgatory. However, it seems Clive Barker is making some sort of a comeback, or at least his properties are. In today's editorial, I will discuss exactly where Hellraiser is currently, what's been happening and how we got there and ultimately what to expect moving forwards and whether we should get our hopes up or not. On February 13th of 2018, this saw the last, at the time of recording, direct-to-video Hellraiser film release, Hellraiser Judgment. Written and directed by Gary J. Tunnicliffe, the film would be important for many reasons. Regardless of what you think to the quality, Hellraiser Judgment was the last of the Hellraiser films to be released under Dimension Films, as Harvey Weinstein and his Weinstein Company entered into bankruptcy on the 19th of March 2018. His businesses and their assets were to be sold off, and this included the rights to Hellraiser. Hellraiser Judgment was also an important film due to where it left the landscape of the franchise with its actors and various creatives. Doug Bradley, the man behind Pinhead, a voice and face synonymous with the Hell Priest, was recast for the second time, the first being in Hellraiser Revelations. Doug Bradley would speak publicly about the project in a negative light, which of course would get the fans of him, not necessarily the franchise, on side and lead to a large amount of negative press. I say fans of Doug Bradley and not necessarily the franchise, as these are the people that can be spotted a mile off, singing the same boring mantra, no Doug, no Pinhead, no Hellraiser, seemingly mistaking an actor for the creative behind the franchise, or mistaking the actor for the franchise itself. Doug Bradley is obviously very important to the franchise, and he has helped shape it to what it was. However, if he dies, the franchise should not die just because he is no longer able to play Pinhead. Much in the same way, any other franchise shouldn't rest all of their financial hopes and dreams on one set of shoulders. Neither should the fans, and their barometer of quality rest it on Doug's. And of course, with Hellraiser Judgment, we would get the same chance from fans. Give it back to Clive Barker. Where was his remake that he promised us? No Clive, no Hellraiser, etc. And a quick side note for those interested, I have actually done editorials and videos on the much sought after Clive Barker Hellraiser remake script and various others across the years. Please see them linked above and below in the description box, so as to decide for yourself if the creator is necessarily the right man behind the job currently. But of course, Clive Barker has always been happy to cash checks for the rights movies to be made, and he has never actually attempted to get the rights back, which he is soon able to do due to the legal loophole which sees original works returned to the creators, lapsing over a certain time frame. So for those that wish Clive to return to his worlds, if he so chooses to, if he's so inclined, if he respects his own material and the fans enough, he will likely start legal proceedings soon, and it's something which we will hear about. However, I think that's unlikely. So Hellraiser Judgment would come and go. It would receive mixed reviews, and ultimately, we wouldn't hear much from then on. Now, we knew of Dimension's sale and the rights moving, but we didn't know who acquired them moving forwards. Until the CEO of Miramax, Bill Block, came out in September of 2018 and teased the possibility of reboots to two iconic horror franchises, Hellraiser and Scream. This was our first tease of who the rights had reverted or been sold to. Miramax were actually former rights holders to the franchise, and although we do not know any details of potential sales, it's possible that a sale took place. 
Miramax was formerly under Disney. It operated as their R-rated arm, and as Dimension was in fact part of Miramax at a certain point, and thus part owned by Disney as well, it's highly possible that if the rights didn't simply revert to former owners, a quick sale took place under maybe a gentleman's agreement. But this would be the first news of any reboot, remake, or generally any Hellraiser news in a while. And again, as per the norm for Hellraiser, the news would go quiet from there for many, many months. Now I must stress that this is actually a normal process. When hearing of films in production or in development for an initial tease and then for all to go quiet, this is perfectly normal. This is neither a good or bad sign and is very standard. However, normally you would then expect the next news you hear to be from the same studio, announcing or teasing a tiny bit more information. And this was not the case here. In May of 2019, Spyglass Media Group released a statement to announce that they, not Miramax, not Dimension, were working on a brand new Hellraiser film. Not a reboot, but a remake. We learned that Hollywood pen prostitute David S. Goya would write the script, and the announcement from Gary Barber, CEO of Spyglass Media Group, was the following. Clive and I go back more than 30 years together. For generations, his brilliantly twisted and imaginative Hellraiser haunted the minds of moviegoers with its searing imagery of Pinhead. David is the perfect storyteller to continue Clive's vision for a new theatrical version of Hellraiser. And David S. Goya would further add, I've been a fan of Clive's work since the original Books of Blood paperbacks and the Hellbound Heart novella. Having the chance to reimagine Pinhead and the Cenobites for a new audience is a nightmare come true. Gary is a true fan as well, and we're committed to making something dark and visceral. For those easily persuaded, it's important to note that this is all PR spin. In this initial statement, it was stated that this would be a movie that is fast-tracked, a reimagining, so a remake of the Hellraiser movie. However, we've heard nothing since. The statement, lauding Clive and his work and promising visceral and dark, etc., is to be taken with a pinch of salt. And again, for a film that is being fast-tracked by a small, independent studio, if it was indeed truly being fast-tracked, we would have heard more about it by now. This is promised to be a theatrical release as well, so to those saying, well, we wouldn't hear much because it's a small-scale production and we'll hear more come release, this is unlikely. Not to mention my slight on Goya was intentional. He is the Hollywood pen prostitute. This man is hired near constantly for scripts, and as such, it is difficult to believe he does in fact have any time available to work on this fast-tracked Hellraiser script. You only need to look at his current in-progress work to realise that. From here, the news gets confusing to some. The next Hellraiser announcement did not come in the form of a movie update, but in fact, a TV series. In an exclusive report for Deadline, it was announced that Roy Lee and Ready Player One producer Dan Farah were on board for a Hellraiser TV series, intent on bringing it to the small screen. This was entirely a separate venture to the movie and would have nothing tied to it in any way, shape or form. And this is due to the fact that Lawrence Cuppin, the producer on the series, has actually held the rights for small screen adaptations ever since he worked on Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth, quietly sitting on the rights and not doing anything with them until now. Both of the news tracks run cold from here on in though. We haven't heard anything on either of the projects. From my personal independent sources, I am aware that Hellraiser, the series, has made some moves forward. Now, I know that they have been taking meetings with potential writers and directors. This, as soon after the announcements as July. The people they have been having meetings with for the role, I can say very much are suited to it. But it is ultimately dependent on who they choose. Now, for the TV series, this is a standard process. It's understandable that the trail would go cold. Until they have scripts in place and a pilot fleshed out, it's unlikely we'll hear anything as they won't be approaching platforms for distribution. 
If the series is to get off the ground, I would expect to hear something in 2020. If not, I would imagine it has fallen into development hell and will struggle to get anywhere near the hellish profile it deserves. The movie, however, is more of a mystery. This is a film that was touted as being fast-tracked. However, we have not heard anything, and it's soon to be eight months since it was announced. The film, I would imagine, already has some hurdles that the studio and the writer are failing to jump. But for both projects, I will keep you updated on, and if you want to stay notified of all things Hellraiser and pop culture in general, please do hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on. If you have any and all thoughts, please do leave them down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this, please do hit that like button and please do share it because this is news which we do need to get out there because the more and the higher the profile of this news, the more likely we are to receive an update. This is generally a way to coerce studios and producers into announcing something. Anyway, and as always guys, I have been Mr. H. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.